to the Pledge of Allegiance. Elvis, you want to lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance, my friend? I pledge Would allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic with which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Awesome. Elvis, you want to do roll call? Sure. No, I mean, uh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> Elliot, Mr. Glasser, I, like that, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chairman Brownrick? Here. Vice Chair Gagnon? Here. Mr. Collins? Here. Mr. Drone? Here. Mr. Dickinson? Present. Mrs. Hubert? Present. Uh, Mrs. Parkhurst? Present. Selectman Morin? Yep. Mr. Dima? Present. All present. All right, thank you. Um, any public input? I don't see any public input. Um, I close the uh, public input. And we'll go straight to old business discussion on Gersha Parshall and Merrill Park. Um, Mr. Collins, do you want to talk a little bit about um, Merrill Park tonight? Uh, yes. All right. Yes, I do. All right, so this will fall under the Merrill Park subcommittee meetings. Okay. Uh, the subcommittee has met in December, January, and February of this year. Uh, we didn't hold any meetings in March. Uh, but we have been recording our minutes accordingly. Uh, we discussed different approaches to best utilize Merrill Park for recreational boating uh, as, uh, as we set that out to be our task. Uh, we did visit the Litchfield Boat Access Point uh, for reference. Um, we found the site to be pleasant. I wish I would have brought in some pictures tonight, uh, but uh, I don't have any on me. But, uh, Anybody who wants to take a ride out there, it's always open to, for review. Uh, the Litchfield site is for car top boats only, you know, canoes and kayaks. It's got a really nice parking area, uh, but it is a considerable distance from the actual launch point uh, where you'd put your uh, canoe or kayak in. Uh, they did follow up with a nice path down to the river uh, for, from the parking area. Um, the way I inspected it, uh, the river access point is not an improved area. It's, it's mainly just the river bank. You put your canoe or kayak in and off you go. So it's not a ramp. It's not a, you know, an improved area where there's gravel or rock put into the river bank. Uh, they did a great job with kiosks and signs. Everything's well placed and well uh, uh, properly lettered and uh, commented. And the unique thing down there, the gate lock, uh, allows for fire department access. They have double double lock on their uh, gate that exits the parking area down the river so the fire department can actually get down there with a truck if needed or an ambulance or something like that. Uh, so after <coughs> reviewing that and <clears throat> looking at the details, the uh, Merrill Park subcommittee uh, figured we could probably do something that at Merrill Park relatively easily and uh, at a relatively uh, little cost uh, because the the park is kind of set up like that already the only the improvements we'd have to make would be some kind of refined parking area and a better path down the river and it would be similar in nature to what the Litchfield folks have uh, that would be like I said the cheapest way out uh, but the committee's opinion uh, is that many residents own boats that are on trailers and have no way to launch into the river so we we wanted to step it up a little bit and go a little further with it, uh, with a trailered park, uh, trailered <coughs> boat access point, if possible. Uh, <coughs> so after discussing this, the uh, Merrill Park subcommittee members agreed to present this idea of reinitiating the efforts for a full trailered boat access launch facility in the northern end of Merrill Park and possibly renovating the southern end to keep kayakers and canoeists you know, uh, at that at that end of the park, it makes it for a better system if you're launching trailered boats, when you're not waiting for somebody with a kayak to unload and all that. They have their own access. The boats would have their own access. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is not a new idea. Uh, I did a lot of research, or actually, we did a lot of research. And if you look at the handout, uh, the top level uh, Merrill Park uh, by Maynard and Parquette, which is the uh, rendition of what a potential trailer boat ramp could look like down there. Uh, this was done up in 1991. So uh, this, this idea of putting a, a trailer boat launch at Merrill Park has been around for quite a while, probably 20, 25 years. And it just seems to uh, 
progress a little bit and then hit a wall or or I I, I don't know why it it stopped but that's what happened by around 1991 1992 it just seems like nobody worked on it anymore there was an actual Merrill Park bolt launch committee at that time and they, they did raise some revenue uh, for that and I think we found some evidence of uh, potential construction with the ramps concrete slabs that are down there and the light posts if if you look at the this drawing yeah, the light posts were designed to go on an island over here. <clears throat> uh, we we kind of addressed uh, or looked at different ideas for this, and uh, Selectman Morin had presented uh, some uh, conceptual plans earlier or late last year for us to look at, and the committee as a whole kind of looked at it too. And uh, if you look at the bigger handout that I put with that packet, uh, the, the Merrill Park subcommittee members kind of agreed that this layout was actually more functional than what Parquet and Maynard Parquet had done uh, in terms of uh, traffic flow, um, uh, parking, and um, its its proximity to Maple Ave. Um, Maynard Parquet had some of the parking right up against the street, uh, where this is more towards the river, so it kind of lends itself to less uh, abutter problems, maybe, uh, you know, uh, or maybe less abutters concerns. Uh, so overall, the conceptual drawing is something that we kind of favored over the other one, and more than likely would like to uh, have something like this re uh, rendered in more of a site plan format. So. Uh, so that's the two. Uh, but one little staff who did raise its ugly head uh, on researching some of this, and that was uh, an asbestos issue mm. down at the park. And uh, that, that top handout is from uh, the town plan planner's office, which comes right from DES, and it shows <clears throat> some of the areas of concern down there where um, there was a capped area along Maple Ave. <coughs> Uh, and I, I think if you look at that, it's actually on a hill, a slope off of the street. And uh, some bits and pieces were found along the, uh, the trench uh, when it was dug for the sewer line right there. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't think as a whole it's a, it's a, a major issue, uh, but it's going to take a little investigation on our part to see if it, if it is, and by that meaning we're going to have to probably dig a few test pits down there, this, uh, near a boat, near the boat ramp or proposed boat ramp area, and maybe where the parking would be, and just to see if there's any, you know, overabundance of the material in the ground. Uh, so do you think we should have um, it tested in that area? Have, a, have an EPA test? Well, I'm, I'm uh, saying, yeah. Uh, if, if we're going to proceed with something along this line, so we're going to you know, take time and effort, the first thing we've got to do is evaluate the asbestos issue down in the park to see if there's anything major that we're going to run into. The minute you dig a hole and you pull up a pile of asbestos, everybody uh, is concerned, and rightly so. Right. But uh, I, I'm thinking that you know we may not hit anything along the riverbank itself. Do you know how much uh, the area... Is supposed to have asbestos? Is well, it, no, that that's determined? that's the problem. It is it, these are finds that were done uh, at, back when they were trenching, and actually, uh, the area. If you look, the area capped in 1991. Uh, I believe that the health, the town health officer. I don't have his letter with me. Had um, had uh, looked at looked into some of this. So maybe some of the records are still within the town, but I haven't had time to go through all the records. Merrill Park is pretty uh, well documented. There, there is a lot of information, and it's just taking time to, to really pour through it all. So um, With asbestos, usually once you disturb it, it has to be enclosed because the air, because asbestos has particles where it, it can go into the air. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, <clears throat> Can we just leave? Are we allowed to just to leave it alone and not disturb it? Well, if you don't hit it, you're you're golden. 
So if we were going to put a new driveway in, down there, I don't know if it be gravel or be okay. pavement, whatever the case may be, would we be allowed just to go right on top of it? Or yeah. Do we, okay. Yeah, you can you can cap it. You okay. know, if you're not digging it up and putting it in a pile uh, and exposing <clears throat> it to air, it's it's not a problem. And there are two different types. I mean, right. uh, the friable is the one that, that most concerns everybody because it's small particulates can be airborne. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, again, I'm not sure what's down there. I think right. that we should um, maybe get some quotes. Uh, I did talk to a uh, professional in the field, uh, and his suggestion for digging test pits, uh, I asked him how much something like that would cost, and he says, well, you get the machinery down there and you get the operator already. He says two or three test pits, maybe 2000 to $4,000, depending on you know, what you're after. Uh, of course, anything you pull up would have to be tested and uh, you know, taken from that point on. Uh, <clears throat> so, again, I don't, I don't think it would be a showstopper down there. I, I think it's just something that if the commission is really serious in moving forward with it, that's the first thing we have to do is just evaluate it, put it to bed, make sure there's nothing in our way, and then move forward with it. Uh, okay. The other question I have is... Uh, <clears throat> on the bolt ramps, um, you're saying you're going to have a, a small bolt ramp for a certain size that can go down in one area, and then a, and then a, a bolt ramp for a larger boats. Well, no, the the canoes, kayaks, the canoes rafts. and kayaks would use the existing uh, launch point in the southern end of the park. It's it's really just a walkway down to the river's edge, and you can uh, yeah, that's the big one. You put your thing. So the 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 minimal improvements there would be just a better and safer walkway down to the river's edge, and then maybe some parking, some trees cleared a little bit on that end of the park to allow for cars to park there. Because if, if you take up all your parking on the trailer boat end, uh, it, it gets it, people get a little upset with that. Right, because that, that end down there for the small boats, there's a lot of rocks in that area, you know? So it might be hard to get a small boat in there. And, and, person could carry it down there but will we clean that up and make that a better use oh of yeah 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 you know you, you, yeah i don't think anybody's going to try to carry a small boat I, the the fire department carries a raft down there right currently and that that's very cumbersome for them uh, where is if we had more of a ramp a more of a, a dedicated ramp for that business they could be in an, in that river within seconds say, or yeah probably seconds right you know, then you know 15 or 20 minutes of unloading it backing it and all that so I have one last question. Um, on the larger side for the boats, there's a isn't there a concrete slab there? Um, doesn't that have to be fixed or adjusted, or how are you going to get bigger boats down in that area? No, the the uh, the only place you could potentially put a ramp in right now is towards the northern end, and I'll I'll point it out. If you go back to this, I I on the back side there's the sewer easement right there. That is about 100 feet from the, the, the river's edge and the sewer construction uh, easement sign. This one here? Yeah, so if you look, I'm looking at it upside down. So if you look at it right there, that's really the only spot you could put it in because you have to excavate down to put in a proper sloped uh, boat ramp. Okay. The proper slope is around 12 to 15%. So you're looking at something that doesn't exceed maybe 25 degrees because you don't want your cars sliding off into the river right? You know, after they get done putting their boat in the water. So you, you, you have to have the room. And so that, that would be the only feasible area to do that in. And, uh, you know, of course, having an engineer or something to physically look at the site uh, to determine that would be the best way to go. But some excavation would have to be done along the riverbank, and that's why it's important before you actually excavate to test for or at least dig for uh, asbestos in the area. Good job, Bill. Good job. One last question. Um, great report, great review, uh, a lot of history here. What's the first step that you guys, what's the first step the committee wants to do? Well, <clears throat> I'm not done. There's okay. more. All right, tell us. I, I think Mr. Gang might have a question. Uh, <clears throat> so maybe we'll get to this, but uh, the finances, I think preliminarily you said that the Merrill Park actually started uh, collecting money and so forth. Not to be a Debbie Downer, I, I think the project's phenomenal, but are you expecting money to come out of the Conservation Commission you know, fund for this, or would you be fundraising, or, or where are you expecting to well, <clears throat> take this? I, I, I think if we can get the ball rolling with uh, some funds from the Conservation Commission, 
and uh, maybe donor pots from the town, maybe. Uh, <clears throat> but the first phase is to, to, to bring everything to light, get, get, get updated documentation. Like I said, that, sure. that site plan is no uh, it, It's too old. Uh, it's non-functional as a boat ramp. Uh, so what I'd be looking for as a uh, Special committee, Council. subcommittee member, uh, would be to the con for the conservation commission to back this plan uh, to a certain point anyway, until we can get to the nuts and bolts of it. You know what is the total cost? But I I, I do have uh, one other uh, point I'd like to Please. bring up. Uh, the fishing game years ago uh, was very interested in developing this site down there until the word asbestos came out and then they slowly backed away um, <clears throat> there is uh, rsa 233-a which is public access to public. to rivers and you know public access i mean yeah, it's yeah. a law believe it or not in the state of new hampshire that it doesn't guarantee but uh, accounts for or provides for a public public access to lakes rivers ponds and things like that tributaries and stuff uh, a quick conversation with the fishing game uh, has their interest is still there but it, the problem with it is uh, the the first bits of money would still have to come from us to, to show that the, the park is viable as an alternate for them uh, and because they're not going to expend they can't expend money for testing sites their, their, their money is dedicated to building sites. Uh, and here's some of the benefits. Uh, they would do all the work from beginning to end. Site plan, uh, approval, uh, permitting, uh, construction, all the way down to the pavement. You know, that, that's one of the benefits. Uh, they, the downside of that is they have to enter into a lease with the town. And I'm not sure how that would go in terms of... Uh, I believe the voters would have to, to decide on that. So we're already looking at almost a year away. And uh, after talking with them, uh, even if they, they decided to take this project on right now, they have jobs in the queue. So it could still be two years away before any real construction could take place. Um, the drawbacks, the, the, that being one of the drawbacks, uh, the other drawback would be its unfettered access. In other words, we can't put a gate up to regulate when the park is open or when the park is closed. It's 24-7, uh, no matter what. Let's see here. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Mr. Collins. Is that, isn't that how the access is right now, or is there a gate there right now? Well, I, no, the, there, is, there is a chain there right now, but okay. it, it's open for, for business, uh, per se. But if you were to put in a boat ramp down there for the, for the town, if the town was to put it in, they could control, you know, hours of operation and uh, access. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be it would be closed probably dusk uh, or uh, dusk to dawn, yep, right. you know, something like that. So, and that that helps promote uh, that keeps people out of the park, you know, when when you don't want them in there in their cars and stuff. Neighbors get nervous. I don't blame them. The butters get nervous when they see vehicles just parked there and idling away. So. Uh, <clears throat> And the, of course, if you went with the fishing game, uh, the police would have to do the policing. Uh, the fishing game do not police their own sites. You know, they, they may come down from time to time to check on it uh, for maintenance purposes, maybe to check fishing licenses <coughs> or boat registrations and stuff. But for the most part, they do not police their own sites. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it could be a potential win if, uh, if the commission decided they wanted to wait two years or three years, but that's, I'm pretty sure we'd be waiting at least two years before we could see <coughs> anything like this happen. Um, I, I would ask this question as Selectman Morin. Uh, if the town, in a hypothetical situation, if the town was to enter into a lease with an organization, do they have to get voter approval before they enter into that lease? It depends what the stipulations are, I would believe. Right. I mean... <coughs> The police patrol it now, so that's no change. I right. mean, it, it depends if there were any stipulations, right. things of that nature. And I can tell you the reason why it stopped the last time because mm -hmm. it was a proposed uh, soccer field, I right. believe, there, and that's what put a stop to it. Right. For the last time it came up. Yeah. The 
um, the do, 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 uh, that that was one last note I did make in my uh, <clears throat> presentation here was that I I'm a firm believer that if we move forward with a uh, bolt launch facility for the town of Hudson and the residents of this community or the surrounding communities that it, it, it is to to be just that that no additional ball fields picnic areas um, or anything else like that it, it just causes too much pro too many problems uh, with a facility like that when you allow all the extracurricular activities swimming and all that uh, to occur people can't get in there with their boats uh, kids are running around you know it, it's just not that type of facility if you if you ever want to see a really nice facility take a ride down Lowell Rock Park it's yeah. right on the boulevard they do an excellent job, but they had one hell of a time in policing that area for at least two or three years because of the the insistence of the the, the residents of the area to use it as a playground. Yeah. You know? So they, they got better as, as the time went on, but it, it, it's 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 tough. It's very tough. Mr. Collins, I have a question. Is this something that um, we could uh, submit a letter to the Board of Selectmen for their input on doing um, the fishing game? Having our approval, uh, asking for their permission, or working with the town of select with the board about doing this project. Well, uh, I, I think Mr. Moran wants to answer. Oh, that I'm question. sorry. I would agree with Mr. Collins getting some samples first to see if it's even right. worth coming to the board of select. Right. You're talking about asbestos. Yeah. yeah. Right. And okay. see, and, and and Paul has got a question also. Um, Paul, please, I'm sorry. Um, I'm having a really hard time with this, I, so I really need some clarification because this asbestos um, issue here, it says locations, other listed asbestos disposal sites. I see one area that's capped, lot 129, but 130, 131, 132, 134, and I'm assuming that's 135, and then when you come up to 141, none of those are capped. So I'm having an issue with that. And then the other one I'm having an issue with this is location of Miller Engineering borings that tested positive for asbest asbestosis. That's on the access road. Now, we're talking about the kids swimming, walking around, probably barefooted. If these areas aren't capped, we had a problem on Central Street that nobody wanted to touch it, and that was capped properly. This isn't even capped. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand how you can go swimming there, and that's kids with bare feet. I mean, you, I need to have this clarified because... I don't well, see that's, where that's going to work. That's well, what, what Mr. Collins and everyone's just talking about is having it tested and seeing what is actual has asbestos area and how far it goes. So that's the first thing that we have to yeah. do. Right. Yeah. Because you know, you know, the, um, any any construction activity, first and foremost, and I just stated it that but this is for river access for boats, canoeists, and kayakers, not for recreational swimmers, picnickers, or anything along that line. Uh, but any any construction activity would cap these material uh, this this material uh, by you know putting a road bed down, uh, whether it be gravel or or compacted uh, gravel or anything like that. You know what I mean? So it the the the, the problem, and I see the problem there. Mm. The issue is we need to resolve what's there and what isn't there. Yeah, fragments were found along the, mm -hmm. the trench. That means, did they dig it out of the trench? Or, uh, or, or this, this trench was dug back in the 1970s, believe it or not. It wasn't even, it was installed at a point where, who knows where they got the backfill from, you know? Uh, I'm not saying we dumped asbestos-laden material on our own property, but we don't know anything about that. That's why we have to do a couple of test pits or test borings to see what's up. Um, um, Mr. Dickerson had a question. I had, I probably should say, yeah, I got like maybe two questions and maybe it, both of them are for Elvis, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe one, um, one other one. But, um, I, and I, I would say that in general I'm in favor of trying to make this happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea. That's why we talked about it last year. So um, the only, let's see, so my question is, one, do you know if a licensed site professional, like if this was in Mass, you'd have to get a licensed site professional to actually perform the testing. Mm -hmm. Do you know if that's required in New Hampshire? Yes. 
Okay, so yeah. the Nellis P is yes. the same, pretty much the same rules. Because it was the same, it was the same professional that did it originally to begin with. I think if you look through the testing, mm -hmm. it was a person that basically can handle asbestos and identify it. Okay. So, so it wouldn't be just any person going for soil testing. That that wouldn't be it. Or a PE like myself would be someone that actually certified in handling or identifying asbestos and the amounts and all that. Yes. So my my next question is: Do we have how many quotes do we have, and, and do well, we have the actual non quote from non the company yet? <coughs> right, it's none. Uh, and that's why I'm presenting this tonight, uh, because in my last part is to move forward. We need to get this done, and um, I'm we want to follow the the rules of the road here. I'd like to get a motion approved. For me to go out and get some quotes for both uh, asbestos testing on the site and uh, site plan, you know, somebody to drop the site plan uh, to a more professional standard. I like the conceptual drawing that's nice to show everybody, but a real site plan is really what we need to do. So we need to get um, some quotes in that on that line. Uh, and to your, to your point, <laughs> I put that down. I was uh, Mr. Dima. Uh, I'm sure I can supply us with maybe a few. Uh, professional companies that he has dealt with in this community because we have dealt with this in this community forever and a day. We're not unique either, by the way. There's a lot of communities throughout the country that, that deal with <coughs> asbestos. It's amazing how big this problem really is. So, But that shouldn't stop us from doing something good with the property. The property is sitting idle. It, it's... It, <coughs> needs something for the community uh, the river we got seven and a half miles of river a uh, border along the river and this is the only spot that we can really feasibly put in a boat launch because so of the so top you want a motion for for testing us asbestos at Merrill Park no I'd like to get a motion to gather yeah. information quotes yes Mr. Jordan uh, did you set an alternate no because we all have all city members here tonight we got six, six. Yeah, you're right. I didn't. Uh, thanks for the catch. Um, I think it's Mrs. Hubert's turn, right? If I'm correct. For the uh, alternate. We go on permanent. Yeah. For permanent alternate tonight. I Be apologize. Um, Before you guys go any further, um, a, a couple things just to kind of summarize this. So there's obviously asbestos there. Mm -hmm. So the two or three testing that you're planning to do. Are you trying to have an idea to how much asbestos there's there, or is this the intent to actually find out if there's asbestos or not? What is the intent of the testing? Well, the test pit should show, one, uh, if there's asbestos in the areas that we're, we're thinking about digging in, and two, if they do hit asbestos, they should be able to tell by volume uh, how much they'll dig up. No. They won't be able to unless they're testing every other foot to give you an exact profile. Right. So my concern is, based on previous experience in town, that if you go in and do three test pits and your run is 500 feet and they say, well, you don't have anything here. Now you go start digging and all of a sudden you find a plate out there. You have to be all right. reasonable on what your expectations are right. out of this test pit. Because you can have anyone go in a few feet and you find out you really have to go five feet to get the slope. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden the testing didn't include that. Or in the past, when they would hit 10 feet, think it's ledge, find out it was actually an asbestos plate. I just want you to be aware of what are your expectations out of this testing well, and how, how apart they will be and right. what if you miss it in the middle? Right. You do 50 feet and then 25, they hit something. It's kind of like shooting, uh, throwing a dart. <laughs> would it be it better be. just to cap it off then? Well, you can't really do any of that unless you know what your profile looks like, which mm -hmm. comes down to grading. So I think testing is fine, but I think first you need to know what you are expecting to do with the site first. Because mm -hmm. let's just say that the grading only includes you to go down three feet at certain areas, and most of the areas is all set. Now your testing really requires you to go down two feet instead of going down six, seven feet, which you might not need to. Things like that. So almost like you need a profile first mm -hmm. and a plan to figure out the layout. Right. Once you figure out your cuts and fills, then you can basically go in and say, all right, I need a test pit here, here, and here, and they only need to be X amount feet deep. 
So that that should come through with uh, site plan drawings. Yeah, it doesn't have to be if anything we, fancy we, either. It right. can be basically a surveying done that you guys can go out and get three quotes. Right. Um, and basically say, I'm looking, start here and here, do the plan and profile. Mm -hmm. They'll give you the existing and propose. Mm -hmm. And once you have that, now you can even have them stake it out <coughs> where the testing needs to be. Okay. And then the depth too. That way you're not mm -hmm. doing the testing for it's going to find out, ooh, we should have gone two feet deep. I, I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, because actually it be, could be testing less areas. But right. before we answer, let me make sure I got uh, Mrs. Hubert sworn in. Yep, noted. Uh, noted. Ms. Hubert seated at 7.27 p.m. Appreciate it. Um, Mrs. Hubert had a question, and then um, Mr. Dickerson. Okay. The question I have is the starred areas is where there's supposed to be asbestos. How did they know those are the particular locations for it? Uh, is it from past history? Or? Yeah, this is actually, if you go on the uh, DES website, they have a very uh, uh, well put together uh, listing of all known uh, inactive asbestos uh, dump sites in the town of Hudson. So we should pretty much know where they are then? Well, if you're looking at the, the, this, uh, the homes that are uh, along Maple Ave mm -hmm. that are outside the, uh, uh, outside the area of Merrill Park, uh, yeah, they, they, they do have fill uh, dumped in them uh, all the way down to area 139 or I don't know if you'd really want to call it a house lot, but it's a very thin slice of uh, real estate along Maple Ave that borders uh, Merrill Park, and that area was <coughs> capped. Uh, but uh, Olsliak, I want to say his name was? Uh, Olsliak? Yeah. Uh, the health officer uh, may have records of the further uh, asbestos finds in the park. I, I have to go through the chairman. Uh, to see if we can get some of his. Can I let go to um, Mr. Morin, Secretary Morin? Do you plan on putting the boat ramp for bigger boats? Mm -hmm. Looking at this, and I may be wrong, I don't see any down there. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Uh, any indication? Asbestos, of, uh, any indication? I don't see any in, on this, no. Right. Okay. That and, is a true statement. And, and, and here's my question. If there were already cement pads down there and light poles, that they had planned to do some work, mm -hmm. there's got to be some documentation somewhere because 90s asbestos was still a problem, so mm -hmm. there had to be some research at that time. From what I could tell looking at it is that at some point after Miller Engineering report was done, they were supposed to go in and put a certain amount of fill through the entire site. Right. And that way, basically, whatever was questionable, because it's kind of hard to figure out mm -hmm. points here and there, they mm -hmm. basically will consider the entire site contaminated if they find two or three pieces. That's right. kind of how they operate. Right. So what they envisioned back then was basically cap the entire site by just putting, you know, six, 12 inches of loam. And that said, basically, you don't have to deal with anything out there. Looking at the existing conditions out there and the trees, I don't think they ever put a foot of dirt over it because obviously you can see the roots. Right. So worse comes to worse, if you're building up, including a parking area, all you have to do is just bring clean fuel to the site. Mm -hmm. And that kind of takes care of that. So the only, the only, and I thought about that one. The, the to be a viable parking area, you're looking at about 200 feet of um, every 10 foot, you know, a 10 foot wide parking area um, for each vehicle. <coughs> and so you're looking at if you go 20 spaces, you're looking at maybe 250 feet actually, because you have to have access around the parking lot. And there was uh, my concern up there would be. If you once you clear the trees and you pull the stumps, that's when you pull up an, a problem because mm -hmm. it's it'll be entangled in the roots. Uh, but if we do some research in that area and do shallow test pits where a parking area would be, because you're not going to dig down eight feet to put a parking lot in, right? Correct. Right. You know, you're only going to pull up the the stumps, maybe grade a little bit of the surface. So if nothing is up near the surface, you're, again you're golden. The the deepest any cut would be would be along the riverbank for that initial uh, boat ramp installation and then it would gradually taper up towards the uh, sewer line construction easement and that's why in that area that's the only area you can really put it in because the the sewer line uh, I got a profile from the highway department uh, looks to be around eight feet down maybe eight nine feet down uh, so we don't want to be 
Yeah, and remember, you're going to have to cut a lot of that to get, because right now you have this, and then he drops. You got those pieces of pressure treated. They're basically falling apart, to, mm. you know, those steps. So right. you're going to have to cut quite a bit. But you do have the, the sewer here, and the ramp kind of, goes that way eventually right so it'll have to be it'll have to be a certain minimum there because we don't want to put stress on that pipe which which, which end are we talking about i was talking about the north end north when end. i was that's talking the, you're talking about the, the south the, end though aren't you no it's the south no. end <clears throat> correct the south oh, end the south basically end. Oh, the south if you're end. looking oh, yeah. at the mirror park it's on the right, right. left hand side but I, but I was talking about the, the right the north hand side end. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, mr yeah. selectman lauren was talking at this end of the big all right i haven't seen that one my bet i was thinking of the other one the existing one out there the other one uh, the other end of the park, uh, with some care and maintenance, we could probably just uh, do a, a really solid repair on that, right. yeah, or, or hire any company to right. do a solid repair on that. Uh, you know, uh, to to give it a more beefy uh, uh, look, or you know, uh, for for better traction for people. Right now, if you're going down there with a 10 foot canoe or a 16 foot canoe, you're you're, you're taking your own life into it's your hands. Cool. You know, right. so, so, we did so look at maybe launching our instead of going straight down the <coughs> river we did look at on the other side of the sewer pipe you know putting in an area over there but uh, that looks like it's uh, a flood area so as the river rises that all fills back in so this is really not a good choice to go in that routine. and the river does that through the years you know it's been very low two years ago now it's pretty high right now so we want to do a motion of getting a site plan and maybe getting some um mr dickerson this was part of what I was I was just okay. hearing the steps in conversation. Right. right. Because now the scope of work might be changed a little bit where it's getting a little more defined. It's getting but more I defined. wanted to, I wanted to actually I was writing down the steps to see what we have currently, to see what we have as a scope of work. Because you have so I got right and, and I'll go through the list and then if someone can respond to let me know if I have stuff out of order if we have to add or subtract so what I heard first is that we need a, a survey updated with existing conditions and some boundary mm -hmm. information on it we, and and topo so it's a topo survey it's a full survey basically mm -hmm. topo existing conditions, existing boundary. conditions yep. it'll be a preliminary survey preliminary because we have to uh, hire a licensed site professional to do the testing. The survey is going to have to record the test pit locations and then stamp the existing I, conditions. I wouldn't do that. I would just simply focus on existing conditions and do a, uh, do a preliminary layout to what the ramp mm -hmm. would look like. After that's done, R then you guys can determine where the testing could go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, well, I, that was. So I actually had that. That would be two. phase two. Testing would be right. phase two. I will not include that just yet after, because right. you might not be happy with what you see there as far as the layout and the grading goes. Mm -hmm. You want to be happy with that first before you commit further to this. Mm -hmm. But right now you have a surveyor. You have to hire a surveyor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Engineering firm to do a survey and a basic right. preliminary uh, grading. And and you have to have a PE on board yes. to at least do the conceptual site plan or. You're looking at ten thousand dollars, just under ten. Yeah, with the cross section, so you got at least, yeah, mm -hmm. two or three plans there at least to yeah, go along with the existing conditions plan. So you have at least four plans. And you don't have to survey the entire well, lot right, either. So let's go back to existing conditions. Yeah, uh, site plan. I mean, what, what do you want in an existing condition report? It, right now, the existing condition down there is is nothing. It's forested. No, it's 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 the specific. It's general terms of what a survey would include. Oh it's yeah, just, the, oh, I can. The, this, right. You have you have topo. You have to pick up existing condition information. That's typical existing condition information. Anything that needs to be updated would be updated by the surveyor. And that that can be uh, identified via site mm -hmm. at that point in time. Um, and you know they would have to put some <coughs> disclaimers of what they don't see, like you you tell the information that they that's buried that they can't. You know they might might refer so to a, a plan of record for a sewer location. Right. So how, how about this? How about this? So we we have existing conditions that are rough. You know we have the topography from 1980. We have the tiles for those. We have the utilities. Right. Uh, how about this? When I get some time. I will put something together for you, including mm -hmm. ortho, 
you guys can go over different options. Give me like a location for it. I'm gonna try to do a profile depending on what we have, and then we'll go from there before you commit. Or yep. if no. you wanted to fine tune it, then we can give that information to an engineering firm and they can really get into the cross sections and all that. How's that? It right. sounds better. Why don't we work with Elvis on this one? It's cheap. It, yeah. <coughs> well, no, no. I, I, I think that I, if I still have a, floor, a lot of money, I'd like. I, I think that's a good approach because yeah, we can do the initial conceptual as much as possible. And then your scope of work is re reduced, hopefully, and who, you, right, who, you can. Who's going to draw up the initial? Conception? I'll do it. I'll, all I need is a location to where you guys are looking right. at, and then so I'll, I'll take I'll it from there. I'll provide that for you. All right. So parking area too. Parking and then I'll area. Run some numbers, yeah. Parking area layout. Now GPS locate it that way. No, nope, uh, don't need to. Just yeah. draw it real quick, and I'll take it from there. So it doesn't have to. This is not within an inch. This is going to be plus minus five, ten feet. And then if we really, if you guys like it, then we'll take it to the next level. All right. All right. But they'll give us some ideas, how many cuts and fills and all that. Mm -hmm. I might need a little bit of time, but. Or, or maybe just to clarify, the topo is right now you have topo two foot increments, basically, Correct, yes. and they may be off a little bit. So when the town did a flyover in 1980, they did the topo as well. Right. So we we'll use, I mean, the topography hasn't changed. Right. It might great. not be it's exact because of the trees, but we have an idea to what we have for a drop out there. It's, so. it's a very flat piece of property. Right. Like On the top, it, and then as you get down. It's a slight, yeah, it's a slight hill down. Uh, but that could actually be incorporated into as part of the ramp. I mean, when you're doing excavation for the ramp, you know. Yeah, and, and when you say the ramp, the ramp has to be defined to, is it going to be a riprap? Is it going to be concrete poured? Is it going to be just gravel? Because, I mean, things wash away. Are you looking for There's, something that you have to go great all the time, or is it something looking permanent? Like Nashville, for example, spent a lot of money, but they have a concrete ramp. Oh, I, um, I, I, that's the Cadillac version. I, if we're gonna, if this is something that's gonna proceed, <laughs> then it has to be done and built to last. Do it right, right? Do it right. Mm -hmm. So we do them here at least. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I mean, uh, you're looking we'll, at a lot of money here, but I'll uh, we'll I'll, take it one step at a time. <laughs> I'll look at the layout. I just need something from you, Bill, when you get sure. a chance, yeah. and then I'll take it from there. All right. Okay. I'll try to have something for you in the next meeting. I so two options. So I'm gonna. So that I'm. I'm just thinking about the motion now. Okay. Well, do we need a motion now? I, I would. I would yeah. yeah. I would suggest that a motion is not necessary at this point, given that we're still in an informational right, stage. Right. Still in and, information stage. And, and uh, Elvis will be developing things. So I recommend right. that uh, we wait. We yeah, we wait until we receive the response and then uh, based on the information we get, we can move forward from there. Okay. Yeah, so we so we jump the gun a little bit on quotes and it, well, even for, I, for I, it. No, it's still there, but let's I, just do I, this I mean, first I and do then. a motion for right. to I can I can get no, we're still a generic a generic uh, quote for like I don't know. And as best as sure, they have a piece of property. Like I, I mean, oh, or, no. or a site plan, uh, development of the site plan. I mean, most I, I've dealt with Keech and Ustrom on a few occasions, and they're more than willing to give a ballpark figure on what this could potentially cost. And it, usually ballpark figures are relatively close to what you'd be expected to pay, maybe plus or minus a couple thousand bucks, maybe, depending uh, on issues that you may run into. But I well, I think for the engineering portion of it, mm -hmm. and, and and actually, if we're going to a one-stop shop like Keach that can do both, um, I would prefer to have the plans in place. Therefore, you can get a better quotation up front. If you right. get somebody to quote it too early, mm -hmm. you're already kind of committing to a, 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 a potential price and setting the stage for a higher amount. Right. Uh, so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't jump the gun in doing that. If we go, I would be in favor potentially of getting some quotes for, from some LSPs just to say, okay, maybe we pick um, w what's a quote for up to ten locations with whatever preliminary right. meter um, metering that they have to do along with uh, whatever excavator for test pits. What does that cost as opposed as opposed to doing the you know. All the plans you can if you really want to do something about the test bit what I would do is get a generic per hole per test bit at five feet deep and say what would that be you're looking at a Sandy will provide access to the site and just leave it at that so you don't get into the numbers you just basically claim right. how many you can do per day and how much is gonna cost me for a test bit up to five feet deep right. or ten feet deep or right. get two different quotes for that matter zero to five zero to ten right. and see what that takes then once the you know, you can do that while we figure out the layout. Right. And then next month, you can execute the testing. 
if you like the layout or the that grading. Would be, that would be the optimum thing to do because, so you know, we can't just keep putting it off month after month after month. I think if we can get a price, get on the next meeting, have a decision made, and then stop moving forward, yep. we can get something actually done. But get a generic one so you're not committed, and then yep. they'll feel like, all right, this, there's no guarantee here to what am I doing and how often you, you just say, how many per day? And how much is the test bit? And then give them to different depths, zero to five, five to ten, right? And go okay. like that. And All right. So what? Do, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. One last Let's, question. No. Maybe. Hold on. <laughs> so where are we at? Are we going to still have Alvis do a planning? Yes. And then you want to do? You want to get, get site pit tests? I will get quotes. Quotes to have site evaluation done in a generic way. Right. So let's do. Let's do the motion and go through a motion, and then go through the discussion. What's your motion? Make the motion. Well, that, the motion would be just to perform, uh, get at least three quotes three for quotes. a, a um, te testing for two different options. One option zero to five test pits, another option zero to ten test pits, along with uh, the required. Um, so both the licensed site for professional and the test pit company, right. or maybe the licensed site professional already has the test pit to piggyback and get one quote from I, I would investigate only companies that are certified to do this type of testing in the state of New Hampshire and by the state of New Hampshire. So you're adding to the to the no, motion? No, I, I can't, I'm just... No, that, well, that, that's, it, that, that's LSP. So if right. you have an LSP and then a, right. a appropriate... So let's clear the motion. The motion is... You're, go ahead. I'll give it a shot. Uh, motion from uh, Mr. Dickinson... Uh, Authorize uh, Mr. Collins to get three quotes uh, for generic, uh, either zero to five, zero to ten uh, test bits for asbestos from licensed site professionals uh, certified in New Hampshire for uh, Merrill Park. I'll second it. Motion by Mr. Dickinson, seconded by uh, Chairman Brownrigg. I open up for discussion. Any discussion? Closed discussion. All those in favor, just say raise your hand. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Mm -hmm. All right. Just a quick follow-up question to Elvis as mm -hmm. a reminder. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. What for, for for consultant services? Mm -hmm. What's the threshold to have to have a competitive bid? Is it five thousand? No, it's under 10, you need three quotes. Um, under uh, anything over 25 needs to go out, but the Board of Selectmen does have the right to waive the bid process if they, uh, if they feel that it's, um, it's either justified or um, it's recommended by the staff. Okay, so it's Zero to 10, 10 I believe you need three, at 25. least three. Um, and again, depends if it's services versus goods, but this, in this kind of services and then anything uh, over 25, I believe, he needs he needs to go out to bid. Oh, anything over 10 needs to go out to bid. Over 10, is it? I forget it's now. Yeah, it's so over 10. 20. I think it's 25. Is it 25? 25. I saw it in the town. It's 25. Okay, 000. so 25,000 then. Um, I'm thinking with the board of it's the POs. Anything under right. 10 is only the chair's signature. Anything over 10 needs okay. three signatures by the board. 25,000 then is, uh, you have to go out to bid, but that can be waived if, right. um, if, if f for good reason, uh, or reasons, depending. So well, this should be under 10, I would think. Right, um, so hopefully. We're gonna find out the prices. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah. find out the prices. Yeah. Let's, I'm not, uh, just to reiterate, or to add to this, uh, <coughs> it would be designated areas that would be required to be dug in. Yeah. In other words, when I, I wouldn't do anything it's else. It's nothing that's just going to be hobnobbed all over the place. We know where roughly a parking area would be and where roughly the boat ramp should be. So it, we should be able to get an operator in there with a machine, hopefully, and boom, dig that out. I, the, the the professional that I talked to deals with uh, environmental issues such as this, and he said typically it runs between two to four thousand dollars per. Per day? For, for, a oh, day. for a day. Days yeah. worth of work. That sounds about right. Right. So, okay. and it's, it, he should be able to dig out. Uh, test pits are not very big. Correct. Now, I, I did do a little research. Coring was another alternative, but the problem with 
uh, drilling cores, which you could probably do even quicker and more. Uh, if it's large chunks, it doesn't always pick up, uh, pick up the chunks. In other words, you can see refined particles in the core material, but you can't really see it. Yeah, you, you, they don't go through the asbestos and pick it up as a big chunk. You know, so that's what I was trying to say. Digging a hole is much better. Basically, I call them like basically like a spoon testing. They have something about one inch, mm -hmm. and they drive that down. And right. if you don't get anything, then you say no. But the asbestos could be a foot away. Right. And all of a sudden, when you start digging, so that's what I was saying. How far apart? You know what you're looking at. If you're going with a backhoe, obviously you have a bigger, better idea. But the biggest thing is the depth. Once you figure out what your depth is for the profile, that'll give you a better idea to what the cost is. All right. We shall get that for you. Okay. All right, so um, all set. We're going to move on to um, Voting. new business. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, you want to talk about? Make it quick. <laughs> uh, gluten partial. <coughs> Mr. Doran, go ahead. All right. I have spent dozens of hours on this. Um, so apparently uh, we use the name Gerton because Victor Gerton was the guy that didn't pay his taxes and uh, lost it. So I think we should stop calling it Girton because that's kind of uh, inappropriate. Um, so I looked up the, the history of the parcel. It used to be a farm of 192 acres. Uh, quite a bit of that land was taken by the state for the uh, highway. Uh, this goes back to uh, one of the residents, uh, a Dr. Zacchaeus, which was the uh, son of uh, Captain Thomas Colburn, one of our early uh, selectmen and uh, a French <coughs> and Indian war hero. Uh, hold on, hold on. Um, I think the history lesson is great, but let's get to what you want to get done. I am. All right, let's get straight to the point. All right, I would like to make a motion to name it uh, the Captain, the Captain Thomas Colborn Memorial Woods. I would second that motion. I think you're, uh, I know you've spoke about your research to me before this, and it's phenomenal work you've done digging up a lot of the connections, uh, and I'm very impressed, so I would second that motion. Um, I think we can change the name. Okay, motion we by Mr. Deronan to uh, rename the Girton parcel into the Captain Thomas uh, Coburn Memorial Woods. And uh, just to make sure I have that spelling right, that's C O R B U R N. C O R B. C U C O L B U R N. C. Repeat. O L. O L. B U R N. Okay. Colburn Memorial Woods. Motion by Mr. Dronin, second by Mr. Uh, Gagnon. Mr. Gagnon. Open for discussion. Uh, uh, Mrs. Hubert. Could you please explain who this gentleman was? All again? right. So he's one of the early uh, selectmen before we were America. Of uh, It was then Dunstable, uh, Massachusetts. And he's the father of uh, the one of the early uh, occupants of this uh, farm. Um, who also, uh, Dr. Zacchaeus, uh, his son, was also, uh, af after his father died, his mother remarried to uh, Major Samuel Moore, which has a plaque in the uh, Memorial Library, because he was uh, one of the first selectmen uh, of this town as an uh, American town. So that's also significant. Um, and also, down the line, this property was, uh, was occupied by T.B. Wasson, which is a legislator that uh, named us Hudson. So there's a lot of history connected this, to this property. I have, and I have a, a concern. Um, I don't know if we can just change a name it like that. have a name. What's that? It doesn't have a name currently. Well, the name is under Gershon. I like to do. I like for us to do a little more research before we do a, a names change. I know that uh, when we did trails last year, um, there was no names to the new trails, so we we were able to take <coughs> that to a vote and vote on it. This year, I don't know if there's an is an actual name or how this name, but I like for 
more research to be done before um, we change a name like this. I don't want us to get into a pickle where we change a name and we didn't have the right to do that, you know? So. Take a motion, maybe us just make a motion to send this to legal. Yeah. Get a second opinion. I mean, I don't have a problem with that either. Mr. Dickerson. Well, the reason why we have the get the Board of Selectmen to approve the trail names, and it was a quick process, was because the fire department wanted to review it to make sure that there wasn't any conflicts with any street names. All right, so, so we should send this to the Board of Selectmen first for a name change. No, we shouldn't have what we want as a name change that, um, decided and then, you know, Send it up to, to the that, board. That's normal. Send it that to would the, be the normal process. Send it so to the know, town administrator. Pat it around okay. twice. So do a motion that we're doing, approve or disapprove it, and then send it to town administrator for um, legal um, authorization. Or execution either way. By the I mean, Mrs. Hubert. Yeah. I was just wondering if it was possible to have the residents involved with the name. Um, that's a good idea or not. But they could I, have. I, I, I'm going to go ahead. Well, <laughs> my other thought was, well, I'm going to have two thoughts. So one thought is is that the name's kind of long. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to make a sign of the park, mm -hmm. it's rather lengthy. But luckily, Colburn isn't very long, and it is. it, it sounds appropriate in general. So, um, Colburn but, Woods? Yeah, but, it, but, but, but yeah, exactly. It could be a conflict <laughs> with that, and that's is. where, yeah, where the, um, Sorry. so we may have to careful about that but um i would not to paul's comment i i would try to refrain from involving the entire town in the name change i really just try to do a bunch if we name. didn't have the entire town trying to name trails for instance <coughs> this is just, this should be a in my mind a, a fairly small exercise that doesn't take a lot of our time even though it might be fairly significant to rename a Mrs. parcel. Park. Just an opposing Park. thought to that, just to play devil's advocate. I think that involving the community in decisions like this also gets their engagement. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these parcels are beautiful spots that nobody knows about. Um, in this day and age, putting out a poll, making it fun, having like a naming contest um, is a great way to engage our public. Um, you know, I, I think also <laughs> about who is it, Ruth from Parker, Historical Parker. Society? Mm -hmm. She did an incredible amount of work as well. Um, so maybe even involving them, you know, in naming some of these parcels would, well, I you think, know, continue that. Well, those that. are two different things. Yeah. I mean, I think, that, I think that's a good suggestion. If Ruth indeed actually did that work, then I think it's good to have their involvement because we did <coughs> work with them on something else years ago. So... But to, it all, you know, with in terms of involving the community for having like a little, make it a little game, I, I think that's probably fine too, but it just delays the process. Right. It depends on how, how much <coughs> you really want to do with it, with this particular thing. It's, so we could I, change the name again. Of, <laughs> I, I, I actually <laughs> agree with, with uh, Ms. Parker and Mike. I, I almost see a compromise here. Um, I understand where you're going with it, uh, Mrs. Parkhurst, uh, to get involvement. But I know Mike Druin has done a lot of history, and, and history is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is some very significant history tied to the property, which is fascinating. So what if we actually you know, chose a name with this committee, sent it to the selectmen for approval and so forth, but then did an outreach and say, hey, we're going to have a name you know, a releasing ceremony where you invite people to say, this is the name, this is the property. So we get them involved and advertise it, but we put it through the process quicker. I think I think we're getting in the process now. You know, is there a way we can shorten the name um, to make it much shorter? Because I'm going to be honest with you, right now I'm not going to support it. It's just way too long. Mm -hmm. You know, drop memorial and come up with what? Captain Thomas Colburn Woods. That's still, that's still way too long. <laughs> this sounds better. With you know, memorial. just way too long. You know, well, Captain CPT. Mr. Collins. Yes. Yeah, uh, APT. I, I know renaming it is something that, uh, you, you know, you'd like to see done. Uh, what happens if instead of renaming it, if we just put a, a plaque on the property with the information that you provided and for that? 
rather than actually renaming it. I mean, I know everybody refers to, to it as the Girton property, but on, mm. on town books, it's probably uh, whatever, uh, 120 Wasson Road. 20 yeah. Musquash. Yeah, 20 Musquash Road there. You know, uh, we could put a sign out there, something a little, because it is a significant piece of history of the town. It, it's in an area where the old uh, coach road was, and I believe this gentleman is buried at the Ford Cemetery at the other end. Uh, we could uh, just put a placard up there. Would you be interested in putting a plaque? Um, well, that goes on to something I want to do later on, which is since the foundation has such historical value, maybe we can get the historical society involved and they could uh, put a plaque. The, if I may, be, there's yeah. one quick note for the board. Uh, the foundation we're talking about isn't on our property. It's on the highway property. So just to that, put that out there. Yeah. All right, so, Mr. Doran, let's go ahead. Right. So while I would normally uh, agree to get the residents involved, uh, this is kind of like an exception. It has historical value to the town. It has well, well documented historical value, and um, it has, it's connected to a, a town official, mm -hmm. one of the first. Uh, I don't think we should delay it more by risking some name that's not even related. Uh, to us and then upsetting a bunch of people because we choose something else Actually, um, I'd like to see us Delay this until next month and um, bring this up again for more detail because okay. I don't think we're gonna come to a conclusion tonight on this You know, but if you can bring it up shorter and if it passes we'll send it up to the town administrator So if you can think of a shorter name um I'm willing to take a vote on that, and we can send it up. Yes, Miss Parkhurst. What if you simply called it Colburn Memorial Forest, and then the plaque would tell them more about who Colburn was? Uh, and just a suggestion. I don't think we should still call it Gurn. I don't think these wonderful places in town should be named after people that didn't pay their taxes. Mm -hmm. you know, as a history teacher, I think a name is important, and it pays respect to so these I'm people. I'm actually that in favor of that almost. Yeah. I'm almost in favor of that. Do you want to change your motion? Do you want to change I your motion? Uh, Change my motion. How do I do that? Elliot? He has to um, withdraw. You just amend it. All right. Yeah. Uh, it can be a friendly amendment. Uh, I suggest as a proposal that um, the motion be amended so that um, the Conservation Commission votes to present to the town administrator a proposal to rename the Girton parcel to the Coburn Memorial uh, Forest for uh, an inquiry as to whether we have the authority to do so or not. Depending on the town administrator's position, that could be presented back to the Conservation Commission at the next hearing for a determination to be made there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, would that be a friendly amendment? I can rework that. Yes. Okay. So friendly amendment from, I'm going to make this a motion. Uh, well, actually, correction. Friendly amendment from um, Mr. Drone to um, have... Conservation Commission um, propose <coughs> renaming uh, Girton Parcel to um, Colburn, C O L B U R N, uh, Memorial Forest um, and present to Town Administrator. For determination as to commission's authority to do so. Yep. Do we need to have another second or is this being amended? We have to agree to the amendment, right? Right. Also, um, who's... I seconded okay. it. So I'll, oh, I'll, I'll, can, okay. I'll continue that second All right. with this so, uh, friendly amendment. Okay. <laughs> Seconds. Okay. So that's the uh, that's the revised motion. So any more discussion? Closed discussion. Let's all uh, take a vote. Well, the only the only thing is, is like I don't even know why we need to go to. Well, we'll just make it. We'll just follow the process. Thing, but but yeah. If, yeah. All those in favor of uh, <laughs> the approval of the amendment, <laughs> unanimous. Yes. We'll send it up to uh, our town administrator. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Oh. 
what I'm, I, not, no. <laughs> I'm falling behind. That's why. Um, also, um, so the uh, foundation of everything is right over the line on the state land. It is not on the path of the highway. So I would like for us to request uh, or get information on how we can acquire those two pieces of land. Not, it's that not the actual highway path, just the, the bit of land that the foundation is on so it can bring it. And if, if it's track. on highway, we have, we have no control of that. It's cut and dry. That's well, state we can, property. You we know? can request. Well, the town actually has um, a 10-year plan in for that land. And we, by law, at the moment, I should say, we can't interfere with that. Once the 10-year plan has um, finished for the town, then we can do and fight whatever we want. Until then, um, if I'm correct or not. Um, and, and, just, and just so everyone is put at ease, nothing's going to happen to the foundation if but some right. miracle this ever happens. They'll right. be going through the historical and the environmental. It'll be identified historical for over 50 years, and the easement is going to be dedicated to it. So that's not going anywhere. You okay. don't have to worry about someone going in and scooping that up. All right. So rest assured, you'll be fine. Mr. Doran. Also, third thing. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, me and Brett took a walk uh, again uh, there in uh we, t we talked to, to a Mr. Uh, Bob Clegg, I think that's his name. Yeah. Uh, he, he expressed interest in the property, too, of keeping the whole area conserved. Uh, and uh, while we were walking on Trigate Road, we, we found uh, where uh, the, g the parcel uh, touches the road. There's actually a, it looks like there's a parking area. Uh, that has two stones across it, and you can drive in, and it, it's a pretty decent flat area away from any wetlands. And uh, so we, we got a, a person to come down, give us a rough quote. Uh, um, and uh, I think we should explore putting a, a gravel parking area there. Uh, the quote was uh, $5,495. Well, for one, we have to get three quotes. We can't just do one quote. Isn't that for over a certain amount, right. though? Well, we still have to get three quotes, still have to come to the committee no matter what, right, for approval. And then we look at the three quotes. Um, putting gravel down there over in that area, I like for us to be thinking about the money that we're going to be spending first. You got money that we're going to be spending at Merle Park, and then we have other things that we're looking at money. I like to hold off on spending any more money at the moment until we have redefined where our money stands in May or June. So I like to wait off on that. Because we're also doing a, a harvest, too, don't forget. So we're going to be spending a lot of money here in the next couple of months. Yes, Mr. Uh, Dickerson. Well, it was just a quick one. A uh, quick thought was let's propose where the trail's going to go, put that on the map, and then once we see what that alignment is, then worry about if a parking area is needed or not. Yeah, I'm in agreeing of doing the trails, too, the myself. Had, yeah, I mean, I had brought it up right. months ago. We could just simply park cars on Cooper. Um, Mr. Gagnon. So as much as I would like to talk about this, um, I'm in favor of pushing the topic off with that said, I do uh, disagree. I think a parking lot should be first so you know where you start. Then you make trails from there. Making trails around the property and then adding a parking lot later seems completely counterintuitive to not true. a central location. I wasn't not talking true. about making trails. I was actually just seeing where the trail is going to be proposed on the map. So talk about the trail alignment first and then figure out whether or not a parking area is necessary to go along with that before you do anything out there go ahead physically all right hey um we got to put this on hold because elvis has to leave so I'll we're taking back, we're taking way too long so we're going to jump down to new business and go to the gsi mapping for uh, conservation land and this is elvis's piece go ahead elvis thank you mr chairman um as you all know part of the conservation commission duties are to basically update maintain and uh, name the trails out there 
I've been working with NRPC, and it appears there's quite a bit of information they have related to our trails, related to a conservation land, town forest, and all that that's been identified. And they're willing to share the shape files with us, and we can have our consultant bring that to our GIS for public use and internal use as well. It'll be used for anything related to anyone that wants to know where everything is, and also for first responders as well. Also addresses your duties as a conservation commission to basically uh, make those available and maintain them through the years. Every year, if we establish this, or we can update it or add to it uh, internally. And then we can share that file with, you, with uh, NRPC as well. But there's no need to go to NRPC if we can have that internally. How much is that for us? Um, the, the, I uh, spoke to our consultant that can, uh, those services can be done for 2500 bucks. Uh, Mr. Collins? That was my question. 2500 Mm -hmm. And they'll include bringing it up to our standards and basically making it available for internal and external use. All right. Uh, Mr. Collins? You, do you need money expended from the Conservation Commission yeah, to, and to purchase that? I, yes. I would need a motion from you to um, assign me and the finance director to work together, uh, use um, adequate um, uh, funding you have available, whatever, at her, at her um, direction to basically cut a P.O. and send that out. Uh, Mr. Velasquez, go this ahead. This is just quickly for my notes. What's the organization that has this trail data? NRPC. NRPC, okay, thank you. Trail data slash forest slash conservation. All that will be brought into our... So system. you're, so you're asking, yeah. Mr. Dickerson? Well, I was just wondering, so Jim Bass had provided information, from what I understand, to NRPC. Mm -hmm. So now you have to have NRPC, you have to have the consultant take NRPC's information and put it into the town's GIS. Correct. Right. And for 2500 this will be like a revolving thing every year, 2500 No, would, or if is it this, this is a one-time thing. If we need to update it, whatever happens. it could be $1,000, could be 500 bucks moving forward. It's that initial to get it in, line everything up, making sure everything looks right, maybe any minor adjustments based on what we see out there. Moving forward, what I'm hoping to do is go over all the conservation land that's out there or that's not in but it's showing as it is mm -hmm. and basically start building an index that what's what you truly have out there that it's under conservation and what's not mm -hmm. what's a forest what's not what's a park and what's not and on top of that we're going to do parks and recs they have a layer for that as well for football basketball volleyball so all that will be brought up as well so under all one packet go ahead mr Downey. um you may want to say your comment first. I was kind of just a uh, closing I'm comment. Just, if this is twenty five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. um, why does it have to be coming all from us? Why can't it be a portion? And the rest come from because us? most of it it is due to you know conservation commission okay. duties. So right. you guys are supposed to put an index together. I'm going to do that for you. Okay. As long as you provide me. So basically, what you will have is you'll have it, everything mapped out, and we can run a data to say what are the parcels that are under that based on the map, and you produce with an Excel sheet, and then you can basically say, nope, this is not ours, nope, yeah, this is this, and then we can fine tune that every year. Mm -hmm. You have a starting point now, versus right now you go click and uh, I don't know what this is. Right. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Gagnon. Uh, so to reiterate uh, your words from the last topic, uh, you know, we're spending a lot of money right now, so maybe we should hold off on this. Uh, and what I'd like to see is we, we're throwing a lot of different projects around with a lot of different financial numbers. Um, I would actually like to utilize some of our boards here and put a project name with a cost, and then at some point, maybe the next meeting, we can decide what priorities are. Because obviously, as you just stated, mm -hmm. we don't want to expend this money left and right, left and right, so let's put some priorities to each project. Well, I think this is a bigger priority going through NPR because this actually has value to all of us in here in the Conservation Commission, I think this is important for us to do, then beside to do on a driveway um, right away. Should um, we vote on that? Yeah, we sure. We can uh, make a motion to uh, extract uh, $2,500 so Elvis can uh, get the NRPC up to date and running um, as normal. So moved. All right. Um, Second. Is that, um, she had We'll open up All right, the discussion. Hold on a second. Who made the motion and who seconded it? I, I made the motion. motion. I moved the motion. Okay. And Collins. you seconded it. Okay. Seconded. Got it. So let's open it up for discussion. Mr. Collins? Uh, Mr. Demick, will this layer be accessible? Well, two questions. Will this layer be accessible by the public? 
Yes. Okay. And will this layer show uh, not only conserved land in the town of Hudson, but also uh, open space uh, at, that is part of developments in the community? We can, can you add that to it? We can add that to yes. The intent is to basically, if we have an open space development and there's the parcels, you know, the single families, and then in the back it's open, we can build on this. This is the first block to add to it. And basically, you will have the ability to tell the town planner or anyone down the road, say, we have X amount of open space, X amount of conservation, X amount of forest. You'll be having a better, you'll have a platform now when you can actually break down to all these layers that you need. And will we be, uh, third question, mm -hmm. sorry about that. What, will we be able to differentiate these, these parcels by maybe color? Yes. So conserved would be green, yes. open space might be yes. blue. And Forest can be tree symbols. Yes, right. that that's what this will allow us to do. Right. We're gonna get the, we're gonna get everything in, and we'll be able to start changing things. That's what this twenty five hundred dollars will allow us to do. Bring that in, make some adjustments, and then every year you can come to me and say we have made this revisions, mm -hmm. or you need to add this parcel now, or mm -hmm. this development got done and there's open space in the back. Please add it to it. Right. And that's what five hundred to a thousand dollars a year will add to maintaining our GIS. Right. So it's gonna give us a better understanding of the actual open space in the community. But also if you're along looking- Along with the yeah. trail systems that are available to the public. Yep, and us internally and, and, and uh, first responders as well. First responders. And what we're also working on is the fire chief is working with 911 to see if we can get another layer in. So if there's something that someone, something happens, someone breaks a leg, God forbid, they'll give you the fastest route to that particular location. Mm -hmm. So there's, we're trying to incorporate it so everyone can get access, but also can be used internally for better response as well. Right. It's just a win-win. But also satisfies your requirements as far as data matrix mm -hmm. and property, right. open space, all these things that planning will require from you when they do the master plan. Mr. Gagner. Uh, last question. Um, so you're kind of talking about the different layers. Would this help us to define what is actually conservation and what is Yes. Town-owned land as yes. we've had those problems in well, the past. Well, it is town land. It's town of Hudson conservation land, but it will identify conservation land versus forest versus open space, yes. Right. But there's no such thing as conservation land. It's town of Hudson conservation land. Right. Well, the only, I think the, what I was trying to stop from happening in the past is like rangers. I know some of the maps said rangers was conservation land when it right. wasn't Which actually. It wasn't, so correct. I just want to make sure we don't have those mistakes Well, the, 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 the actual patch or batch we're going to get might have some errors but what you can do is you'll have that map available and you can say we did the research this is not the case this needs to be removed Elvis that's what right now we don't have anything we have an idea to what you have out there or we but we don't actually have a map we can say right right wrong right wrong Th mm -hmm. this is what we're going to get out of this this will make our job easier easier exactly inventorying everything yes. that we should be doing and bringing up Correct. the date some of the information that was presented is is a little out of date right i mean because building has taken place if you look at the, the standard gis system even currently some of the buildings that are new in town aren't in that system correct you know so and that system was based on 2017 flyover right next year we might do a flyover all over again and update everything based on that last time we did it was I want to say 2010, 2012. So we did a huge jump in 17. Right. <coughs> we might do that again in 2020. But that's twenty thousand dollars. It's it's a lot of money. All right. On the floor. So I'm gonna. The motion's on the floor. Uh, let's take a vote. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Raise your hand. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <coughs> Motion Thank passes. You. No stirrings. No rejections. All right. Excellent. I'll try to be back. I'm going okay. across. I'll try to be back. Yep. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, we skipped over bylaws. That's fine. Um, yeah, um, bylaws. <clears throat> Get straight to the point. Um, we can do one of two things. I think we're on our second reading on the bylaws, or for a second, we don't have to read through all the bylaws. We just have to present them that they're here. Um, or we can put them onto the net. Um, the only reason why I say that, talking to our town administrator, we have here, um, it says 144. That will go after the town um, rules. That's what, where that's going to go. So, yes, Mr. Gagnon. Uh, so I'll make this short. I'm not going to go through all my comments, but uh, Mr. Veloso, 
I went through your initial job, which again was well done. I made some comments. Hopefully they're legible. I'm just going to hand this to you uh, for corrections. So with that said, I wouldn't vote to make this official or put yeah, it online we'll by now. Until next month. But I have a, a handful of corrections, and we can talk about your understanding of my comments okay. if need be. That's all I have. If anybody yep. else have any comp, I, I I too have a couple of items that should be incorporated into the bylaws. Okay. I will present it to Mr. Veloso, uh, and he can put it in. If we're going to talk about this in the May meeting, yeah, then let's have uh, a refined set of uh, minutes from one individual, i.e., Mr. Veloso yep. can can edit it, put all of the updates in red, and then or some other color, and then uh, print you know hand it out to everybody so that everybody can see what was uh, added to them. I'll have him. Uh, can you uh, email it to everybody? Uh, yes, I'll uh, I'll work on that. Okay. Yeah. For the May meeting. Yeah. All right, Mr. Collins. Uh, if uh, Mr. Veloso is uh, so inclined or very busy, I can offer uh, my hand at doing this. I'm pretty good at uh, minutes and things along yeah, that line. So you are. <laughs> I can make the, the adjustments and hand them out at the next meeting. Okay, yeah, I'll let you know depending on, on how I'm doing. So. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gagnon. Uh, just to clarify in your last comment, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, please don't email the commission. Uh, oh, yeah. Either email the town secretary to email us, or if you do email us, make sure you BCC us only. Yep. All right. Moving on. Rename in Rangers Drive. Um, <coughs> I don't know if, if anyone wants to. Um, go ahead, Mr. Mrs. Parkhurst. Um, so just a thought, um, I don't think that this is a rush um, for Rangers Drive. I mean, it's newly acquired um, town forest. I have heard, um, you know, residents have reached out to me with thoughts and opinions. Um, but I, I think, you know, I kind of go back to my last statement. Um, because I'm not in a rush, or I don't know if you guys are in a rush, um, to go maybe back out to the community since there was, you know, 72% of the town voted for that to be town forest, you know, maybe doing something where we put out a poll or a survey. Um, a couple of thoughts that have been floated around were keeping it Rangers Drive as a Rangers Drive town forest because it's recognizable. Um, it, you know, certainly had a lot of attention in the community. But then other um, thoughts that I have heard relate back to the history, kind of taking a deeper dive into the history of that area where there was, you know, Mellon Farm um, was one of the, um, you know, original homesteads in that area. Um, so there is great history there that we could dig up, and I don't think that, you know, we have to rush to name it in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So I guess I, a, a question I put out to the commission is, you know, can we motion to pursue that? I'd be happy to take it on myself um, to solicit feedback, to solicit ideas, to do a little research on the Thank property. Uh, Mrs. Hubert, go ahead. Um, if we do get them involved like that, is it possible to simplify it by just picking out a couple of names and then I instead of a bunch of names, if we did that, that could be What's your concern? a lot of complication. It sounds like it would be a, a big event to do something. Mr. Collins, oh, uh, you can I, sure I was so. thinking it's going to be a big event to get a lot of people involved to uh, to do something like that, to bring it all to the next meeting. But how would you go about uh, getting townspeople involved to rename it? I mean, we have to be careful how we use the Internet service. Would you tell people to submit a name to town hall? Well, I mean, I, I think if if we have the support of the commission to um, develop a survey that you know, solicits feedback on that, then the commission could support that going out there, whether it's through social media or the, or, and or the town website. I don't, see, I, don't, I don't see a problem with that, doing like a survey through the town website, who wants to, um, um, picking up names and stuff, and then we can come back in May and pick maybe the top five and then put it back out there again and have a vote of having people picking out of the top five what's the uh, top one to do for June, you know? I don't see an issue with that. Mr. Collins. Uh, I 
I like the idea of doing a little research on the property to see if there's any historical significance to the property uh, and then going at it from there. Uh, I think it's it's only just uh, um, in I, I'm for that too right I, I'm good with a survey if that's right. what the commission feels that that should be done but I mean if we can at least do a little research on the property for us to see if there's any really historic significance to that area of the town maybe we could come up with one or two names yep. here's, a, here's a thought here's yep. a thought um, because at this month Mrs. Parker is, is an alternate but next month she'll be um, sitting in member because it goes back and forth um, why don't we have her do the history would you be interested in doing the history of rangers drive now are we allowed to put that history that you find onto the web okay so if you can do the history and place it onto the town web all right that can start it why are you up to doing something like that certainly i can collect the research i can put that together but make um, it short. You don't want to make it all kinds of long and everything so people get bored reading it. Um, let me go, Mr. Collins and Mrs. Hubert no, and Mr. Gagnon. No, I, I made my comment okay. about Mrs. doing the research. Mrs. Hubert. So if we got the history of the, um, the land and we put it like we did with the Girton, put different forms of names down right, and then have them pick which one they like the best? Well, that's why we said we get top five. We get a top five. But you were going to... Put it out there and let the town pick the top five but what if jennifer picked the top five she picked different ways of putting the name down like well like you just uh, took away from getting the town involved then but you could come back with a bunch of names from a lot of people so could, just so just a sequence of events can i can i gather information yeah. and ideas have the permission of the commission to maybe solicit you know different you know people like the historical society solicit prominent members in the community that might know about this come back with five you know different semantic you know titles um you give me a thumbs up and then i put it out there you know 21st century style you know out to our community maybe put a little something in the paper you know an advertisement saying hey we're going to try and name it these are a couple names that we are proposing please um you know I log on here to submit I, your feedback i like your idea but i think we're getting too deep. We're getting too far. It's going to almost sound like it's going to take too long. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gagnon. So I just want to finish this up. I, I agree. I, we don't need to talk about all this right now. I'd like to make a motion to give you permission to act on behalf of our board or our commission to do a little research, develop a plan to start a name at convention. We talked about a lot of things here. Mm -hmm. Just put together an idea that's a little bit more structured than what we're doing right now. Next meeting, say, this is the structure I recommend. You know this kind of game this kind of naming convention make it easy for us to say yes and go from there but for right now just a motion to give you permission to gather the information to, not to, to put something to so we're not going to put any on any any on uh, nothing on the website yet no. okay no. all right second hey, um open with discussion all those in favor raise your hands motion passes no eyes no no asterns uh, mm -hmm. Perfect. let's move on we have to realize we're getting behind now yeah. um I know, um, Mr. Gurn, uh, Mr. Collins. I just wanted to remind the chairman that the wheels of progress move, progress move slowly. So we need to move we're, a little we're faster. Right. I agree. Um, I need to quote that. Mr. Wagner, uh, Mr. Wagner, <laughs> the Wagner land. Mr. Dern, you wanted to talk about doing Durin. a site walk. All right. Uh, so while I was doing research on Gurn, I, I, I found out about uh, this place called Wagner Land, on our to the south off of uh, Drake Road, I believe. It's part of a larger collection of parcels that run along uh, the Tingsboro border and even cross into Tingsboro. It looks like it was a joint uh, venture at some point. Um, I looked up several of the uh, deeds and there's a mix of uh, town-owned parcels that don't have a conservation easement and some that do. Uh, so, uh, and one of these parcels uh, is marked as Wagner land on the map and on the deed to make it conservation. So uh, it kind of all connects into this one thing. And then there's one parcel, there's like two areas. There's Wagner land and then there's the rest of the string over here. 
uh, this is one parcel of like 30 acres uh, that could connect the two, and I think that would be of interest to the open space okay, so uh, let's, subcommittee. You wanted to do a site walk first, the Wagner yes. land. How many acres is that? It's over 100 acres. So I, I walked that, it. It has established trails. It's all marked by metal signs. I don't know who did it. That's on the southern end of uh, Musquash, right? That's dra yeah. off of Drakeit Road. Drakeit Road. Oh, okay. And uh, I walked it, uh, and it took about an hour and a half to walk one way. So it's a pretty good size area. Okay. So when would you, uh, so um, let's make a date to do a site walk. We're getting into better weather. Um, Easter's coming up. In two weeks, so Easter weekend, I'm just gonna let you know I can't do it. You know, you guys can. So um, that leaves us with what the 27th, the end um, of 27, 28th, or maybe uh, the weekend <coughs> after. Uh, the fourth, I'm actually gone. And the fifth, I'm gone. Okay, so no, fifth, fifth is not bad for me. Oh, that's Cinco de Mayo day. Um, so, you guys. So 27th or fifth, it sounds like. Yeah. We have any? Both are good. Both are good. Anybody else? Both are good. Fifth. No. Yeah. The fifth. No, the fifth would probably work for me. Fifth. But fifth, fifth would be better for me. All right. Fifth would be good. Yeah. For fifth me. is a Sunday. Mm. Yeah, the fifth is a Sunday. Yeah. Okay. So fifth. Um, the uh, meeting location will be uh, chauffeur circle. Like chauffeur circle. Schaefer. Uh, uh, oh. It's something. Uh, the the parcel there is uh, it takes up half of the street. It's really nice drive. It's all forest, and that's it connects to the trails right there. So you can park right on the side of the road and walk right in. We okay. want time. We need, yeah, exactly. I was just gonna get that time frame. Nine, ten o'clock, ten o'clock Sunday. Is that good? I don't know, man. It doesn't matter. Nine, nine. I'm. Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. All right. So we're looking at ten o'clock. Ten a.m. Ten a.m. All right. We're we're in Schaefer Circle. I'll, I'll send the email. Okay. Make sure to BCC everybody, please. Yeah. So just to let the uh, public know that we're going to do a site walk at uh, Wagner Land on <laughs> May 5th at 10 o'clock. And uh, we will put that out to the uh, website to let people know that there's a site walk going. And they're invited to come. All right. Moving on to... Um, Next thing, the timber harvest update from uh, Mr. Dickerson. Okay, so I'll just so I got contacted by Mike Powers, who had come in from Bay State Forestry Service, and we made a motion back in November to allow him to um, perform the bid for the timber harvest or the bid services, and um, he had gone out there after the snow started melting said now's a good time I want to get this bid early because the land, the project has more value earlier in the season than later in the season for a couple of reasons so I'll get into that so he was he wanted to make sure that he could move forward with doing the bid invite and a bid date send the bid date so he's done that and I think he might even gone out on Friday. I don't remember exactly if it was Friday or not at the moment. Um, so he may have already performed the the bid invite um, or bid walkthrough. It included a walkthrough. So anybody that was looking to bid could attend and walk through the property with him to get asked questions and whatnot. Then the Bidders have two weeks to send in their price, so leave the bid. Um, the opening date would be for April 22nd, roughly for the bids. And he wanted us. He asked us to see if we could make a decision via email to move forward with the award and start the project. At that point, I said, no, we probably can't. 
I even checked with Randy and it was his opinion that no, based on our new rules, we shouldn't entertain anything like that. It's probably going to require a special meeting and to be able to award the bid in late April or early May. They actually award the bid in late April so they can get started in early May prior to our next meeting. He didn't want to have to wait until May 13th. He, um, and this is all weather pending too, because if for some reason there's a flooding rainstorm, obviously he's going to, he may award the project, but he wouldn't recommend starting the work until everything dries out. But the goal is to be able to, you know, in regular conditions actually have the work performed in May. So because it's only, it only should take a couple of weeks to do, but yet once he awards the project, so say we, I'm going to back up just date, date wise. So it was suggested that we have a special meeting on April 29th. What would we get out of having a special meeting on April 29th? That would allow him to award the bid, get, um, do the notice of intent, get the Timber Harvest Company set up as a vendor, do the butter notification, and anything else that would be required to get the, you know, and he would also walk the property with the selected company once again be, before any work would begin, um, just to make sure that they had a, a good game plan and if it was too wet, but they could access, say, like ha the upper half of the site then they, would, you know, he would limit it. Um, he would limit the scope of work at that point in time. So, the question is: Is can we actually have? Does everybody here think that's necessary to have a special meeting? He would. Mike Powers would be present for that special meeting if we had any questions. If we didn't, and so, at, at this special meeting, we're just asked. We're just approving him. To go along with the job from the quote we, we're yes we're basically um or i probably should say yes that would still place the responsibility on us to say yes move forward with the bid you know um, x company who has bid you know fifteen thousand or whatever the amount is projected amount to start as soon as it's possible. Mike Powers deems it's reasonable conditions to perform the work, something of that nature. And it would probably just be like a, really, if, if no one had any questions, it would be a five minute meeting. Right. So I, I did think of, I did think of, actually hang on for a sec, because I think there's a second option, potentially. The second option is, is to do a motion tonight so that he could simply move forward with the highest bidder. Mr. Collins. Well, yeah, yeah. So Are you done, Mr. Dickinson? I, I don't want to. Um, yeah, let me just look down and see if I covered everything. I, I think I did. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll uh, I, I don't see any problem with that. We hired uh, Bay State Forestry to do a uh, survey of the property. We already know we're going to have the timber harvested. He gave us a quote in an earlier meeting uh, with regards to the number of uh, trees to be cut, uh, the types, uh, and all that. Uh, it's up to him to decide on which company is going to pay the best amount. Uh, I, I don't see any problem with us making a motion tonight and allowing him to move forward with the, with the job. That, that's what we hired him to do, or that's what we contracted him to do. Okay. I'm willing to make, uh, make, we can make a motion on that. Yeah, to avoid a special meeting. Yeah, to avoid yeah. a special meeting. Okay. If, if all, you know, it, if we're all in agreement, I don't see a problem with it, you know. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be able to field it appropriately since in, back in November, all we, the emotion was very limited just to the bid. We're getting things so. ironed, ironed out. That's what we're doing. Can you provide the motion, uh, Mr. Dickinson? I'll be happy to second. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the motion would be to allow... Mike Powers of Bay State Forestry Service 
to award the project to the highest bidder or the most appropriate company that he deemed uh, yeah, applicable to perform the work and to um, have him move forward with establishing the start date based on his normal practices, which would include the abutter notification. I will second that motion. And, and a other, yeah. Maybe in, in his best professional judgment and in his best professional judgment. Yeah, and I would include the abutter notification okay. in there just to make sure we get that done because I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. totally certain that he always does that. Okay. And Mr. Gagnon, second it? Yes, sir. I open up for discussion. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Collins? I just have one quick question, because th this is an ongoing um, effort since last year. Mm -hmm. We started the site walks. We started, did he finish the uh, forestry plan for the uh, Kimmel Hill Town Force? I don't, if I got it, I don't recall seeing a finished document. Yes, I believe he did. Mr. Dickerson, is this, is this it? No, no, that was no, the that, species and the types of trees. That that's the bid that's invite. That's the bid for the trees and stuff. All right. So I, it's, um, but no, this was the actual management plan they did last year. Right. I, I believe you're correct, uh, but I can't remember. I don't remember s putting my hands on it. Did they? Yeah, he had like a 25-page document? document with a bunch of graphics on it. Right. Oh, yeah. right. And I think he actually talked about it at the meeting too. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. Okay. I remember that now. So need a copy of that? <coughs> no, no, I, I just, I don't remember seeing a physical copy of it, so yeah, I'm should have sure. one upstairs. I, okay. Yeah, they have one upstairs. I'm pretty uh, sure that got emailed to us. You know, I remember seeing that document. Probably in an email, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, so, um, Ms. Parkhurst? Just a quick question. Did you say you have the date um, that he's going to do the walkthrough where if we want to go, we can join him? Or he will tell us I the can date. double check to see if that walkthrough is already done. I mean, it's really just for the bidders. Um, if, you know, if somebody, you know, he wasn't opposed to having, like, Randy express some interest in going out there, so. I would be interested if, if he's going to um, do it again. Sure, I can double check to see what date that actually is. He, he did actually send a, did, did you print out his email? That's it, that it actually his email? in there. Um, I just don't have, I couldn't pull the email up on my phone right now, and I didn't have a print out of it. Hold on. Give me 60 seconds. Okay. Well, no, I'd be the, the one on top, I think. No, uh, that's all I got. Contact will be awarded. No, that's all I got. If I may, in the sake of time, we have a, a motion on the floor, sir. Yeah. End yeah. um, the yeah, discussion. Can I can, I can yeah. get back to you on the date. I'll, yeah. I can check that when I get Thank home. End the discussion. All those in favor, raise your hand. Aye. 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 Unanimous. No extensions, no no's. Let's move on to the next thing, which will be Scouts. Um, Boy Scouts so from Mr. Gagnon. I will make this quick, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I was contacted by the Boy Scouts group in Pelham. Um, they actually have Boy Scouts who live in Hudson. Uh, they wanted our permission to use our social media, our town webpage, and just the residents here to pass the word along. Uh, they would like to do trail cleanup. They will be guided by adults. Um, they've done this for uh, national forests up in New Hampshire. They do this for areas in the, in the uh, local area. But they just wanted to ask us if they could come on our conservation property, clean up some of the trees, you know, trash, move some sticks, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I've been hearing nothing but insanely positive things about what they do and what they accomplish. Um, they were they gave me a long list of how respected they are for these cleanup days. Um, and so all I ask is I'll probably make a motion to allow us to advertise, like I said, on social media, and I can pass an email to you guys with their information because it already is a, um, it's actually a fundraiser is what they're doing. So if you wouldn't mind passing, if you felt comfortable, pass that information out to residents and family and friends to let them know what's happening. Uh, that's about it. For the people at home, if you're interested, this is Troop 610. Uh, they'd be doing work on May 4th and May 5th. They're expecting to have 300 plus man hours to be used between Pelham and Hudson. Uh, and if you want to go see their uh, fundraiser, it's on GoFundMe.com slash troop dash 610 dash trail 
dash beautification. Again, that's uh, GoFundMe Troop 610 Trail Beautification if you want to donate to their, their cause. It sounds like they do a really, a really nice job. So with that, could I make a motion to allow us as a commission to advertise on social media and via email to you people uh, with the information I just stated? I'll second it. Thank you, sir. Open up for discussion. Um, when you say social media, it will go to our website, right? Uh, yeah. The Hudson Town website? Yes. Mm. Uh, all right. To the okay. administrator. And uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Moore? Let's talk to um, the IT director first, make sure that's a possibility. Yeah, um, I'm going to go into that um, with Lisa Newt in about two seconds here. Uh, Mr. Collins? The other thing they may want to add is uh, <laughs> if this is going to take place, where where it's going to take place, I mean... What parcel of land? Yes. What parcel of land they're going to I tackle. gave them a few uh, ideas of parcels. If this committee actually has any recommendations of which parcels you prefer to steer them to, um, I'd be happy to pass that information along. I think we can give them permission to, to most of the parcels, but it may be, uh, you know, uh, um, Musquash, potentially, uh, maybe Girton, I don't know, Rangers, but any, any recommendations, two or three parcels you recommend? Well, we don't have any trails yet in Girton Park. True. 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 I, 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 for now, I'd stay off that until. Okay. Uh, until so we can say uh, yeah. musquash. Uh, musquash, maybe the town forest. Yeah. Town Along forest. the road, there's some dumping that they could clear out. Five yeah. oh, so We want to make the My town house. forest yeah. is going to cut. It. Well, no, it wouldn't be cut that quick. That first week in May. To I don't think it would. To ease that time, if you guys weekend. wanted to yeah. uh, message me privately, right. recommendations, I'll pass it to them. But yeah. as long as I have permission to advertise for them, that's great. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we have well, a motion. The only, oh, yeah. I have to Sorry. fill the motion. Yeah. Um, all those in favor? Raise your hand. Uh, well, we have a motion that passes. No no's, no extensions. So we'll move on. No well, other quick, business. Quick thought since you were on that. If I'm wondering if, if there was. It, is you're talking to Troop 610, if we can identify any potential Eagle Scout that may want to do another bridge project. I Musquash. will certainly ask that. Um, mm. And I have been communicating with the troop and um, Mr. Coughlin I, I, as well. Under Coughlin. Under Coughlin, so that he can kind of yeah, yeah. help facilitate yeah, Joe, those discussions yeah, so too. Talk to Joe, yeah, that'd be yep. great. Yeah, let's see. <clears throat> troop, troop 22 can do it too. Yep. Okay, we're going sure. to um, financial status. Um, we see that we're in a negative here under conservation professional services. We understand the incumbent will actually balance this out. Um, don't forget we also have um, a nice little chunk of change here. Um, I don't see March's um, numbers here, but we'll probably see them next month for the month of May. Um, currently in February you have $1,600. $17,269.15. I'm going to um, keep moving. Next is correspondence. So um, what I'm going to talk about real quick is um, uh, Miss Newt from the IT department. Back in, um, I think it was, was it January or February, Back in January, February, um, our chairman, our former chairman, Mr. Dickinson, and uh, Mr. Duran had expressed an interest in adding data or modifying the existing HCC pages on the town website. Uh, she welcomes any enhancements that we can make and want to ensure that all committees are presenting what they need for our residents. We're about to go live. So um, we can put anything what we want on there. Um, the only rule I have, nothing goes on there that's political. Um, I don't know if we need to go to have one person, if that should be myself before it goes on there um, to Mrs. Newt. Um, I think um, having land on there, when we're going to have hiking adventures, when we're going to do trails, when we're going to do sidewalks, they have a right to come to see when we do site walks for wetlands um, um, permits. Um, I think those are great, even for this Boy Scouts that we're gonna have, that's a great idea having it go live. Um, I think we just need to come to a conclusion that, um, I think I just made it. I think everything before it goes on the website should go to the chair, all right? 
That way it gets approval of the chair, and then I'll just submit it to uh, um, Mrs. Newt. Um, Mr. Duran, I'll go to you first. All right. Um, I, I spoke with her quite a bit. It was actually September. Okay. Um, so I think you should all look at the, the website Merrimack Outdoors, which is the Merrimack Conservation website that they actually hired someone to do. It, it pretty much has uh, all the properties, the history of them, the maps, trails, what you can and can't do on them, uh, pictures, and it gives uh, updates on, like what you said, mm -hmm. what, what we're going to do. So that I'm could gonna, be a good reference. I'm going to give our, our, DJ, our, our IT director, um, Bravo Zulu. She's done a very good job in this town on our communications and our IT department. And I think she'll do a good job here. I think whatever she comes up with will be good. So um, <clears throat> those thoughts are important. And I think she's probably taken a lot of that information um, into into her program, um, Mr. Velasco. I think um, my suggestion for the essential basic rules for any posting on the Conservation Commission's portion of the website would be, one, any such postings would have to go through the chair, and two, the only postings that would be allowed are matters within the Conservation Commission's purview. That way you ensure that there's no extraneous postings that are irrelevant to the Conservation Commission's duties and leave it at that. Okay. Make it simple, make it straightforward, and make it specific to the Conservation Commission's purpose. Mm -hmm. All right. May uh, Mr. I quickly interject uh, uh, maybe something in our bylaws to outline some very simple steps for uh, a public outreach? Might be something to consider at some point. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Mr. Duren? We should have a designated person to do all this stuff so uh, everyone's not tossing ideas at you. That, I mean, that won't be a problem for me. I will make the time. Um, if I tell you I'm going to make the time for this specifically, I will make the time for it. I will take, I will take that. Um, the only thing I will not accept if you send me something is anything political. This is not a political committee, just to make that totally straight. Um, any other? Oh, let me see. Hold on. We're getting down to time uh, crunch here. Um, hold on. Let me see if there's anything else in here. Hold on. <coughs> Okay, so we are down to, um, we don't have any minutes of correspondence. Uh, did that commissioner's comments, we have eight minutes, so you have to be brief, and I mean brief, uh, Mr. because we're still going into uh, non-public after this. Mr. Collins? Uh, we do have approval minutes. We do have minutes. To but it wasn't put into our package for... Oh, uh, they were? No. March 11, 2019? Yeah. There might have been in the packet, but they weren't put onto the um, agenda. Huh? Is it there? Yeah, it's there. <laughs> yeah, there Does it say what? Oh, I have it. <laughs> well, it says, it, okay. I it usually has a date, that's why. Right. For, and it doesn't have that on mine. I have a no, there's no date on mine either, but there is minutes in the packet, and we can approve them. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes if no one has any further issues or comments. Excuse me. It says it on the top, April 8th. The very first line. No, under the um, column six, it yeah. says approval of minutes. Doesn't have a date for the approval of minutes. Oh, okay. On the agenda, that's all. Right. Uh, I would like to uh, just make one edit uh, under commissioner comments. Uh, Mr. Collins actually discussed the topic of old homes days, uh, not uh, Chairman Brownrigg. Any other discussion on the minutes? Give All those? Second, sir. Oh, second. Second. Um, open for discussion. Opposed discussion. All in favor of approval of the minutes, raise your hands. Abstain. Abstain? I wasn't. Okay. One abstain. Six approved, one abstain. That wasn't here either, but <laughs> it looked good. Okay. <laughs> Uh, just to make sure I got that, uh, Brett Gagnon approved the minutes. Who seconded that? Uh, Mr. Drewin did. Thank you. And uh, Mrs. Hubert abstained. Okay. Got it. Uh, going to uh, Commission's comments, we'll start with Mr. Collins. Uh, well, uh, real briefly, 
I did get an application in regards to all home days. I still think it's a good idea for the commission to follow up. I'll just give you an indication. Nonprofits, it's 125 bucks for the four day event. Uh, we get a tent, pop up, whatever you want to call it, and we can show our wares, so to speak, uh, to the general public. Uh, trail maps, uh, you know, things along that line. I can put that under for new business next month. We can yeah, I'm that. yeah, I'm just I think that's idea. giving you an idea. And uh, second, I'd like to thank the Hudson Chamber of Commerce for including us in their annual directory uh, on page 25. Uh, they laid out uh, some of the conservation land for public enjoyment uh, with the addresses and the acreage size and all that. So I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for including us in their annual directory this year. Excellent. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Jordan. All right. Make it short. I, I don't need a list. Make list. it short. <laughs> make it short. Um, all right. I think we should make it uh, official. Uh, I would like to make a motion to endorse Jen for membership. No. 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 We're not even going to get that discussion. I would like to make a motion. No. To endorse no. We're not even going to discuss that. Motion is not in commissioner right. comments. We're not. Yeah. yeah. It's not. You're part of your comments. Political. All right, I'll continue with my other part. Um, so while I was doing some researching, I, reading annual reports, uh, I discovered that the Conservation Commission uh, was established in uh, 1971 uh, by a town vote. And in 1978, uh, the, uh, which was 41 years ago, the uh, the Board of Selectmen at the time increased our number to seven. Okay, wait, stop, stop. The Commissioner's Commons is not about giving lectures to um, anyone in here. It's just to let us know how things are going in the town, if we've got hiking coming up, if there's um, an event coming up, or if you want to congratulate someone on here. Um, we're not going to get into that. So if you don't have something of value that has something towards going towards our trails or our open space land or congratulating someone, then if you don't, let's move on. Well, uh, since there's nothing that says, uh, that defines that, and this is of value to many people. Uh, so, uh, as I was saying, uh, we have had seven members. All right, I'm gonna cut you off, forget it. I'm trying to be as, as fair as possible. So we're gonna move on. Mr. Dickerson? Um, I, I was just gonna say that um, we did have a This has been in presence. discussion. I want. I don't want to discuss it. It's not open for discussion. I'm no, letting no. you know that. Mr. Chairman. I'm not on that. Plus, it's, it's, one sorry. order. Right. Okay. <laughs> this is not under comments as he stated. We're going into non-public. If you have questions in non-public, we'll deal with them there. Right. Okay. And, and uh, well, this was just all, all I, I no, was No, cutting off discussion. Oh. Here. Oh. You know, remember this. Um, the comments, the commissioner's comments, was extent. <laughs> I'm only trying to get what? Uh, no, a clarification. Go ahead. I wasn't talking about Mr. Druin's thing. I was just going to make a quick statement okay. that we had presence at the old home days. That was it okay. previously. That's it. That's right. a great idea. That's all I was trying to say. I think you took it. You got to hear what I'm saying. All right. I, you didn't listen. Thanks. I apologize, Mr. Dickerson. <laughs> Mr. Moving on, Mr. Veloso. Trying to write down the bloody notes. We can come back to uh, not, not, I have no comments. Move we, on. Uh, All right. Mr. Gagnon? I do uh, have some thoughts about things that were said previously that are very strong. So, all I will say in respect to the chair is please attend tomorrow's selectmen's meeting, April 9th. There will be some topics of discussion uh, that should be uh, reviewed and talked about. Ms. Parkhurst. Um, so I just want to acknowledge for the public record that I have put in for the member position. I did so on February 19th. Um, that was about two months ago, and there have been um, about three dates that have been deferred. Um, the reason why I'm mentioning that for the commission is that I do hope that I have your support. I do hope that, um, that the work I have done and the attendance I have had um, has earned your respect. I do believe that I will not have the opportunity to interview. Um, and I do want to state that 
I am aware that there may be some changes that have not, um, they're on the agenda tomorrow night for the Board of Selectmen yeah. meeting. Let's finish up with the agenda for, for tonight and then you guys can deal this with the Board of Selectmen. Important, though. Yeah, but this, we, all, this, we all support our right. commission members. And I understand that, but this isn't not the time right now. Should um, be made public. Mrs. Mrs. Hubert. No, I have nothing. All right. I have nothing either because I want to get this meeting. All right, so Mr. Velasco. Sorry for cutting you off, Mrs. Parker. I'm ending the meeting, so we're going to go into um, non public. Okay, I move. Pursuant to RSA 91-A, column 3, subsection 2, subsection D, consideration of the acquisition, sale, or lease of real and personal property, which, if discussed in public, would likely benefit a party or parties whose interests are adverse to those of the general community. The Commission may also go into non-public session for any other subject matter permitted pursuant to RSA 91-A3, subsection 2. Second. Seconded by Mr. Collins. We are going to be doing roll call. Chairman Brownrigg. Yes. Vice Chairman Gagnon. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mr. Druin. Yes. Mr. Dickinson. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Hubert. Yes. Um, Mr. Veloso, yes. Uh, that's all members. Uh, we are in uh, non-public session at 9.01 p.m.